it ain't the left side or the right side, then it must be the fin side. side. It ain't the left side or the right, right side. Thank you, Solo D. Welcome to another episode of On the Fin Side here with Kat and Paul. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. I'm Brian Cat NFL on Twitter, and Paul is fanatic underscore pick. That's fanatic with a PH. The Dolphins are three and ten. Travel to New York for the second time in as many weeks to face the New York Giants, who are two and eleven, coming off nine nine losses in a row. A game with major draft pick implications as we get closer here to the end of the year. So. The way it shapes down is right now the Giants would pick second in the NFL draft. The Redskins would pick third, and they have a somewhat winnable game against the Eagles at home this week where the Eagles are four-and-a-half-point favorites. And then you've got the Dolphins picking fourth. They're 3-10 and ten, uh, with a strength of schedule of 490. So basically how it shakes out for the rest of the year is if the Dolphins don't win another game and finish 3-13, and 13, they'll pick no lower than fourth in the draft. If they pick or if they win one game and finish five and eleven or four and twelve, excuse me, they'll go no lower than seventh in the draft. If they win two games, they, they obviously win this game against the Giants and defeat the Bengals next week. They'll be five and eleven. We'll pick no lower than ninth in the draft. Uh, and then if they run the table, which we don't expect, then then it gets into a lot of other situations. But Paul, there is a game to play this week. And we've always talked about 2019 being one big preseason game for the Dolphins. We're continuing to look at these individual performances as we get closer to the end of the year, but more players continue to go on injured reserve. Uh, this week, they put uh, cornerback Ryan Lewis and quarterback Ken Webster on injured reserve, two players we were looking at seeing a little bit more of as the year progressed. So my question to you, Paul, is, you know, I look at the Dolphins roster and see 29 to 30 roster bowl players. Which three players do you look at in these final three weeks and say, to be on this team in 2020, they need to play well here in these final three weeks? So I know there's a ton that we could cover here. I mean, we could go up and down the roster on offense, we could go up and down the roster on defense. But one guy that I really, really want to see – continue to do well and, and show what he's got is Patrick Laird. I, I know he's a guy that we've looked at as possibly the third down back in the future. I know he's done a few shifty, exciting things coming out of the backfield, but I want to see a little more reliability from him in the running game so that that's a little bit more of a threat with him moving forward. Obviously, Miami needs to address the running back position in the offseason. Absolutely horrific performance from Kalen Balazs this year. But really, Patrick Laird's a guy that I want to see something from as we move forward here. Uh, another guy, actually, who had a breakout performance last week, a guy I know that you know I've been a fan of for a while, but to see if there's a role for him on this team against a little bit better secondaries down the stretch here. Isaiah Ford had a little bit of a breakout last week. And given that Albert Wilson's dinged up again, given that Devontae Parker's dinged up, given all the injuries to the wide receiver position, I want to see what Isaiah Ford can do over these next three weeks. See if it's worth rostering him again in 2020. I know a lot of folks are looking at some receivers in the draft, guys like Jalen Rieger, guys at the top of the first. We constantly see uh, LaVasca Chenault mocked to the Dolphins in the first round. Not necessarily a fan of that move. Uh, But really, it'd be good to see what Miami has there in Isaiah Ford in real game action with full games to see how he he handles the game as the game wears on. Uh, Additionally, one last guy, I know we've talked about him periodically. Uh, I went back and forth between Charles Harris and Sam McGuavin, but really Charles Harris is a guy we need to see if there's anything there. We we saw some quick twitch from him uh, over the past few weeks, but it has not materialized from there with Charles Harris. That's something we need to see put up or shut up time from Charles Harris here as we go down these final three games, especially against some winnable opponents. If he can't do anything against the Giants and a and absolutely immobile Eli Manning, if he can't do anything against the Bengals and, and Andy Dalton, if he can't do anything against the Patriots, um, which is a little bit more of a challenge here, I just don't think there's a place for him, given the pass rushers in the draft this, this coming off season given the, the emergence of guys like Vince Beagle and, and Rake McMillan a little bit in that pass rush role, 
Andrew Van Ginkle. Um, again, it, it's definitely put up her shut up time for Charles Harris as well. Yeah, that's a good point with Harris because they don't face good offensive lines here throughout in, in the last three weeks. I mean, Patriots are, they've got Isaiah Wynn back, which they didn't have at the beginning of the year, but the Bengals offensive tackle situation is a train wreck. I mean, John Jerry may be lining up at left tackle for them to give Dolphins fans an idea on that. And this week, You've got, whether he faces, rushes over left tackle or right tackle, you've got Nate Solder and Mike Rammers, two slow-footed uh, pass protectors there. And I'm glad you said those three guys. So you've got Patrick Laird, Isaiah Ford, and Charles Harris. They were very high on my list, and I've got three different ones, so I'm, I'm glad that, that you said those three. Number one, uh, Adrian Colbert at free safety played every snap last week for the Dolphins, 71 snaps, and he seems like a guy that's really good position a lot of the times. I mean, He's dropped two interceptions, but he's been in that spot. Um, and when I look at him with the where he was drafted with the 49ers, he was a six-round pick out of the University of Miami, so a lot of our Canes listeners uh, are probably quite familiar with him. And he had a really good rookie year. And then he got hurt, and the 49ers ended up cutting him when he got caught in a numbers crunch. So it, this could be a very good signing for the Dolphins there as he continues to compete with, uh, with Stephen Parker at that free safety spot. Uh, also, Keaton Sutherland, the left guard. I mean, we've seen him get a lot more playing time recently with the, the demotion of Michael Dieter. But Michael Dieter's going to be here uh, because of his draft position and his ability to play all three interior line spots. We're not sure about Sutherland. And the Dolphins have chosen uh, Keaton Sutherland in a lot of these situations to, to be active on game day and – get some playing time over some, some guys that, that, that may have been more able to play that week, like Shaq Calhoun, like Chris Reed, uh, who was recently cut. So we'll, we'll see about that and if he can compete for a roster spot next year. Third, maybe a little bit of a surprise, but Durham Smythe at tight end. I mean, look, I, I think he's got physically a lot of pieces in place. I mean, this is somebody who ran a sub 4-6 coming out of Notre Dame at 6'5", 250 pounds, but – Reality is I expected him to be a better blocker at this point. And if he, he's not a very good blocker heading into 2020, and he's not showing more of that here in the final three games, that I'm not sure if he is a rosterable player. And maybe the Dolphins, if they have the opportunity, can get a better inline blocker. So th- those are the three guys we're each looking out for here, Paul, as, as we look into this game. When I look at the Dolphins on offense, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is going up against a very young secondary with one veteran. Um, so you've got two rookies in DeAndre Baker, first round pick out of Georgia and fourth round pick Julian Love out of Notre Dame. And then you've got second year player who didn't play last year. And, and that's cornerback Sam Beal, who was a third round supplementary draft pick. They cut Janoris Jenkins. So very young secondary, except for Antoine Buffet, who played actually for the Colts at strong safety uh, the year that, that they won the Super Bowl in 2006 in his rookie year. So, goes way, way back. But Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, you know, he's, he hasn't been on a roll, I'm going to say, but l- let's say that, I mean, let's take a look at the last couple of games here. And over the last 113 minutes of play for the Miami Dolphins, the Dolphins have punted the ball two times. They've picked a lot of field goals, but only punted the ball two times. So the, the Dolphins may be able to move the ball effectively here against this Giants defense. They really might. I mean, one big thing that's going to be a test for the Dolphins is is actually going to be up front. I know statistically you haven't seen a huge boost from him, but Dexter Lawrence in the middle of that Giants defense has really been coming on strong lately. Um, so he's a guy that we've got to look out for, especially with guys like Keaton Sutherland, who you mentioned, uh, Evan Bame, et cetera, at the guard spots, Daniel Kilgore at the, no, uh, at the center. Um, because he can get some push if if he's up against anybody with poor technique. And he's an absolute monster to move in the middle. And when you've got a guy that's more effective catching the ball out of the backfield than running the ball between the tackles, you have to be able to run the ball between the tackles uh, on offense. And so that could be something that's interesting. But, yeah, I think Isaiah Ford does have a chance against the secondary. I think Alan Hearns, if he plays, Devontae Parker could really have a field day and, and – give Patrick Laird that chance without a defense that's just pinning their ears back and running running hell-bent for leather into the backfield. So 
again, but I, I would definitely keep an eye on Dexter Lawrence in this one because he does have a tendency to command double teams at times. He does, and it's interesting with the Giants' front um, with Dalvin Tomlinson, Dexter Lawrence, and Leonard Williams. It's kind of like with the Dolphins' defensive front uh, with Wilkins and Gavin Gottschaw and John Jenkins, where you've got three very good defensive tackles, but not not a lot from the edge. I mean, uh, the Giants do have Marcus Golden uh, at that spot. Uh, he, he provide, he's probably the best pass rusher on both teams, as well as third-round uh, pick O'Shane Zimenez out of Old Dominion is another guy. So the offensive tackles will be tested a little bit, maybe uh, not quite as much a, as the interior of the line. So it's a good test this week, given that we, we want to see – if Evan Bain and Keaton Sutherland and Mike Beater are going to step up because they, for as bad as the Giants are, they have a pretty good defensive front there along the front first three guys. And speaking of wide receiver, uh, Devontae Parker and Alan Hearns did shed their red jerseys today, are expected to play on Sunday. That's not 100% for sure. And Mike Gesicki, one catch for six yards last week, but I would argue after looking at the All-22, he was open a lot. And – he and Fitzpatrick, for whatever reason, just were not connecting from down to down. I look for Gusecki to really bounce back this week, though, because um, Alec Ogletree is somebody who misses more assignments, more coverage than, than really anybody at the linebacker position I've seen in a while. So, it, it, But, it, Paul, the interesting thing is at wide receiver, Isaiah Ford, this is a guy we got to know about. Heading into last week, he had two catches for nine yards. Then the receivers go down. He finishes with, uh, what, six for 91? You know, are the Dolphins going to have an opportunity to get Ford on the field for even 20 or 30 snaps this game if the rest of the receivers are out? I think they will. I mean, it's, again, this is a staff that's trying to win but also trying to see what they have. And I think what Isaiah Ford did last week warranted getting him some snaps. I mean, Albert Wilson, let's face it, at this point in time, is he ever fully healthy? Uh, and I'm not even being rhetorical there. It, it's, you know, it, the guy's never fully healthy. I, I, I think if you give him too many snaps a game, he breaks, which is unfortunate because we saw a little bit at the beginning of last year where he absolutely was electric and coming out of that backfield or coming out of the, the slot or coming out of the edge. And unfortunately he just doesn't seem to have that durability and, and, you know, again, I think there's opportunities. You go even if it's going to a four wide receiver set at times. It's not like we've got a glut at running back that's going to command that you that you really you know bring everybody in tight. I don't think, as you pointed out with Durham Smythe, you're not going to command going two three tight ends at times, um, unless it's for blitz pickup purposes because the Giants' best pass rush comes from the linebacker position. And when it comes to Albert Wilson, you know, I think it's important that he lines up in the backfield frequently. A, because I think he's been there. He creates more mismatches when he can start out in the backfield, go out to the boundary, go out to the slot. And it also allows you to get Isaiah back on the field and, and get more snaps for him too. So if the Dolphins can spread the field out here and Fitzpatrick gets, gets rid of the ball quickly, take advantage of the young secondary, uh, I think they should be able to move the ball more. But I hope they do get on the field. Um, on, on the defensive side of the ball, Paul, Eli Manning expected to start this game over Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is out with an injury. Last week, Eli Manning uh, looked like he started to show the Eli Manning of old in the first half, and the, the, the Giants were up 17-3, to and we're thinking, man, the Giants may actually really help us out with draft position. Even though they wouldn't have left, Dolphins wouldn't have leapfrogged them. It could have set up a scenario this week if the Dolphins had had won, or excuse me, if the Giants had won, where you know either the Dolphins win the game or they go ahead of the Giants in the standings uh, for the for the draft pick. But anyway, Eli finishes the game 15 for 30, 203 yards, two touchdowns. The Giants don't score a point in the second half. They don't score in overtime. They end up losing 23 to 17 after blowing the 14 point lead. So uh, this may be one of Eli Manning's final games. May, if not with, as a pro, definitely in a Giants uniform here. Probably as a pro, I would think, at this point. Um, the weird thing about last week was Eli was absolutely electrifying in the first half, and then he stopped throwing the ball to Darius Slayton, and, and that really had an effect on the offense. 
I mean, Slayton absolutely lit up the first half with Eli, and then they stopped going his way. And, you know, depending on which camp you're in this week, if you want Miami to win, you want the same thing to happen again where Eli just avoids throwing it to Slayton because Slayton absolutely took over that game in the first half, utterly destroyed the Eagles. And then Eli just stopped throwing to him. I mean, uh, we saw the recipe with the Eagles a few weeks ago. You throw the ball at their corners, whether they're there or not, if you've got an electrifying wide receiver. And Eli just didn't do it. I mean, uh, you've got to imagine they watch game film in in New York or they just kind of gave up at this point. So they had to just go out and do whatever. Um, But again, hopefully Miami can keep Slayton covered. With Evan Ingram expected to miss this game, that's a huge, huge help to Miami because Miami has struggled to cover the tight end at times. And, and Evan Engram is definitely uh, one of those sneaky good tight ends that, that tends to beat Miami's defense. So really you got to cover Darius Slayton in this one above and beyond Sterling Shepard, above and beyond anybody else out there. Yeah. If Evan Ingram doesn't play, that's a big chess piece that isn't there. It's kind of, as far as wide receiver against the Dolphins secondary, it's kind of like that same matchup that, that Ryan Fitzpatrick and our wide receivers have if, if healthy uh, against that young giant secondary. I mean, it, it, the, the Dolphins are going to struggle to line up four or five players in this game. I mean, Eric Rowe has been really good at strong safety. Um, he could seem a cornerback in this game because there isn't a tight end to cover, really. I mean, Rhett Ellison is – and he's questionable to play. <laughs> he is not somebody that you really have to account for. He's more of an extra blocker out there. So – your starter should be Nick Needham at corner, Adrian Kohlberg at free safety. Jamal Wiltz will be either the fourth or the fifth defensive back. Eric Rowe will either be strong safety or cornerback. And then after that, I mean, Stephen Parker, Walt Akins, Marcus Sherrills, and new new uh, uh, signee here, Nate Brooks, might, might be the ones you look at. So um, it, you've got Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, and Darius Slayton against the, this defensive back group. And the, the question is, are the Dolphins going to be able to provide enough pressure on defense to force Elon Manning into those, into those decisions? Because if you give him time against the, with these wide receivers against the Dolphins secondary, he, he may be able to put some more points on the board than he was able to last week against the Eagles. So, Paul, what else jumps out to you here for the Dolphins on the defensive side of the ball? What else are you looking for? I'm really, and I hate to start sounding like a broken record, looking for Sam McGuavin to have a little bit of a comeback game. I'm hoping that they use Jerome Baker in a few more blitz packages, given the fact that if, especially if Evan Ingram misses this game, but I want them to get creative with some blitz packages. I want to see Vince Beagle getting that pressure that we, we saw a lot early on. Um, and again, it's the, the other aspect as well as you do have to contain Saquon Barkley. I, I, I can't believe I haven't really mentioned that thus far. But again, it, it's if they can contain Saquon Barkley, make the Giants one-dimensional, this is absolutely a game that Miami can win. Um, this is a pretty atrocious Giants team that's shown flashes at times but can't sustain it. And, and really, Eli has a propensity to make mistakes. So if this young, inexperienced Island of Misfit toy secondary can can force Eli into a few mistakes here. This is absolutely a winnable game for the Dolphins on defense. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned Barkley. We saved the best for last on there for the Giants roster. I mean, former second overall pick, had over 2,000 total yards last year. This year's been a little bit different. I mean, he starts the year off with back-to-back 100-yard games. Then he gets the high ankle sprain in the third game, misses a couple of weeks, um, initially they said it was going to be a six to eight week injury. He comes back in two weeks. Well, probably wasn't the best decision because since he's been back from that injury, he's only averaging 3.06 yards a carry. And one thing with say Saquon Barkley to watch out for, and it's, it's the only criticism coming out of college is that he tends to want to run around the defense as opposed to in between the tackles. And I, I think that benefits the Dolphins because they're very good at staying in their lanes um, and, and, uh, you know, Barkley is somebody that's going to have to make more use here in the passing game, I, I think. Um, so he, obviously Barkley's still a star, but has not been that same player this year. 
No, agreed. I mean, it, it's again, and hopefully with, with the speed that we have at linebacker, we can match up well with him. And that's definitely going to be a big thing to watch in this game. So Paul, looking at the rest of the year here, I'll, I'll say it. I, I don't want the dolphins to win this game. Uh, I'm, it, this year, this win will do nothing for me. Uh, I, I feel like for, for the most part, I, I, the players that are in positions of importance, the, the Devontae Parkers of the roster, I, I feel like I already know everything I need to know about. I hope we see some good individualized performances here, but I, I really don't want to be sitting here and saying at the end of all this, we're picking between seven and nine in the NFL draft because we beat the Giants and beat the Bengals who are picking first and second. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but overall for this game, what is your prediction? God, you're going to put me on the spot here with this one. I, I've literally been pinballing back and forth uh, as we've been recording this show. Given that Evan Engram's not expected to play, given that Eli Manning is expected to play, and given the, the just woeful mistakes that the Giants seem to have a propensity for, as well as, as Saquon Barkley uh, not being the same player this year due to some injuries, I'm going to think Miami pulls this one out 21-17. I'm going to say that this is the final win of Eli Manning's career. And I'm going to go Giants 20, Dolphins 17. Because I don't think the Dolphins, despite how bad the Giants offensive line is, are going to be able to pressure the quarterback enough. And now you've got Saquon Barkley in the passing game, Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, and Darius Slayton, who has 386 receiving yards over the last four games with four touchdowns going up against this completely depleted Dolphin secondary that from the beginning of the year, it's quite incredible. We can't even say that Ken Crawley or Ryan Lewis or Ken Webster are not there anymore. Uh, so I think when they spread the field, that they're, they're going to find players like Lyndon Stevens and Nate Brooks out there who are basically playing their first NFL game. So I see the Giants pulling this one out 20 to 17 as we get closer to the end of the year. And that will do it for our breakdown of the Dolphins-Giants matchup heading into Sunday. You can follow Paul and I on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, iHeart Radio, and Spotify. I am Brian Cat NFL. Paul is fanatic underscore pick. That's fanatic with a PH. On Twitter, be sure to leave continue to leave comments in the YouTube section. We really appreciate it. We try to get to as many as we can. And if it's not on the right side and it's not on the left side, it is on the same side. So we'll do this out. It ain't the left side.